this is um, the life of Euphemia, chapter 139 of The Golden Legend by Jacobus Vornin, um, written in 1275. Um, supposed to be a story that happened more like I think in the third century so Euphemia was a daughter of a senator and saw Christian men in the time of Diocletian so sore tormented and all too rent by divers torments that she came to the judge and confessed herself to be a Christian and she comforted by the hearts of the other men and by her own constancy and when the judge slew the Christian men, the one to for the other, and made others to be present because that they should be afraid of what they saw, so cruelly tormented were they and broken, and that they should sacrifice for dread and fear. And when Euphemia saw even before her the holy saints, she was more constant by the steadfastness of the martyrs. And so she spoke to the judge and said, that she had suffered wrong of him. Then the judge was glad, weening that she would have consented to do sacrifice, and when he demanded of her what wrong he had done to her, she said to him, For since I am of noble lineage, why do you put others before me, strangers and the unknown, and you make them to go to Christ before me? For it were my pleasure to go thither by martyrdom before them. And the judge said to her, I had supposed that thou wouldest have returned in thy thought, and I was glad that thou hadst remembered thy noblesse, her passion. And when she was enclosed in the prison, and the day followed without bonds, was brought before the judge. And then she complained right grievously, why against the laws of the emperors was she alone spared to be out of bonds? And then she was long beaten with fist, and after sent again to prison. And the judge followed her, and would have taken her by force to have accomplished his foul lust. But she defended herself forcibly, and virtue divine made the hands of the judge to be lame. And then the judge weaned to have been enchanted, and sent her to the provost of his house, for to promise to her many things, for to make her consent to him. But he might never open the prison which was shut, neither with key, nay with axes, till he was ravished with the devil, crying and treating himself, that aneth he escaped. And then she was drawn out, and set upon a wheel full of burning coals. And the artilor, that was the master of the torment, had given a token to them to turn it. And when he should make a sound, that they all should turn it, and the fire should spring out, and all to break and rend the body of the virgin. But by the ordinance of God, the iron and the artilor, ma and the master had in his hand, fell to the earth, and made the sound, and they turned hastily, so that the will burnt the master of the work, and kept Euphemia without hurt, sitting upon the wheel. And the parents of the artillery wept, and put the fire under the wheel, that would have burnt Euphemia with the wheel, but the wheel was burnt, and Euphemia was unbounded by the angel of God, and was seen to stand all whole, unhurt, in a high place. And then Apuleius said to the judge, The virtue of Christian people may not be overcome by, um, but by iron. Therefore I counsel thee, do smite off her head. Then they set up ladders, as one would have set hand on her. And he was a non smitten with a palsy, and was born thence half dead. And the other named Sosthenes went up on high, but anon he was changed in his courage, and repented him, and required her humble pardon. And when he had his sword drawn, he cried to the judge that he had rather slay himself than touch her whom angels defended. At the last, when she was taken thence, 
The judge said to his chancellor that he should send to her all the young men that were jolly, for to enforce and to make her do their will till she should fail and die. And then he entered in and saw with her many fair virgins praying with her, and she made him to be christened with her admonishments. And then the provost did do take the virgin by the hair and swung her thereby, and she ever abode constant and immovable. And then he did do shut her in prison without meat seven days, and pressed her there between four great stones, as who should press olives. And she was every day fed with an angel. And when she was between these two hard stones, she made her prayers, and the stones were converted into right soft ashes. Then the provost was ashamed to be vanquished of a maid, and then he made her to be thrown into a pit, whereas cruel beasts were, which devoured every man that came therein, and swallowed them in. And anon they ran to this holy virgin, and fawning her. And the beasts joined their tails together, and made for her a chair to sit on. And when the judge saw that, he was so much confounded, so that he almost died for anguish and for sorrow. Then the butcher came for to avenge the injury of his lord, and smote his sword into her side, and all too hewed her, and made her there the martyr of Jesu Christ our Lord. And the judge clad him with clothes of silk, and hung on him oceans and brooches of gold. But when he should have issued out of that pit, he himself was ravished of the beast, and all devoured anon. And then his people sought him long, and Aneth found they little of his bones, with his clothes of silk and his oceans of gold. And then the judge ate himself for madness, and so was found dead and wretchedly. And Euphemia was buried in Chalcedonia, and by her merits all the Jews and the Panims of Chalcedonia believed in Jesu Christ. And she suffered death around the year of our Lord, 280. And S. Ambrose said of this virgin thus, The Holy Virgin, triumphant in virginity, retaining the mitre, deserved to be clad with the crown, by whose merits the wicked enemy is vanquished, and Priscus, her adversary and judge, is overcome. The virgin is saved from the furnace of fire, hard stones be converted into powder, wild beasts be made meek and tame, and incline down their necks, and all manner of pains and tormentors, torments by her orations and prayers be overcome. And at last, smitten with the sword, she left the cloister of her flesh and is joined to the celestial company, glad and joyous. And blessed Lord, this blessed virgin commendeth to thee thy church. And good Lord, let her pray to thee for us sinners. And this virgin, without corruption, flourishing, Get unto us that our desires may be granted of thee. Yeah, that's the legend of Euphemia.